Today I want to dive into building a resilient brand. The reason I want to dive into this today is because with so much going on and so much drama happening in the world, it's very easy to get caught up in all of that. And it's super, super important absolutely critical that if you are building something that's way bigger than you, if you're building a movement, if you're building a business that you are building because you want to do more than just make money, you want to create greater change, not in the li- not just in the lives of the people that you're working with, but also as an industry, maybe you're wanting to lead your industry, maybe you're creating a great wave of change in what you're doing. And so when you do that, there are things you're going to come up against. There are roadblocks that you'll come up against. There are hurdles that will be in your way. And instead of you looking at them and being overwhelmed by them, I want today for you to just take stock on how many things you've been through in your life already or as you've been growing your business or if you're at the first stages of your business, you're going to be Uh, going through these obstacles as you grow and it's really important to have some kind of idea that is connected to your reason why. So we create vision boards, we get really uh, focused on our vision and that's really important but what's just as important as that is that you have your reason why, you're really super clear about your reason why and amplify your reason why. When you do that, whenever you hit an obstacle, whenever something faces you, as you're building your brand, there are so many different things that can happen that as you achieve or overcome or get through all of the things that you're going through on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis, each thing can sometimes feel like that's the worst thing in the world. And when you feel like that, I want you to be able to look back on this this reason why and say, that's why I've got to keep going. That's why it's important for me to keep getting up every day. That's why it's important for me to Uh, set that extra thing on my list. That's why it's important for me to keep showing up. It's why it's important for me to bring my voice out to the world. It's why I need to keep going. And when you have that reason why, it enables you to be completely resilient. It doesn't matter what happens in your business. I've had so many things happen just in even in the last 12 months. Uh, a, A year ago, not even a year ago, I had a client come and work with me for the day on our boat. We did we do sail away days in the summer. And so she came and we were working together and I went to check something on my Facebook account and realized that my Facebook account wasn't working. And and at the end of the day, it was really on my mind. At the end of the day, I check my Facebook account has gone. So all of my contacts, everything, it's all my Facebook account's been hacked. I've lost all of that asset. Now, the important thing is that I already had connected with everybody that I wanted to connect with, that I wanted to continue doing business with. There were two things around this. The first was that I made sure that all of them were on my email list. So if anything happened to any of my accounts, I've still got my email list. I can still communicate with them. The second thing was that I had uh, admin on all of my Facebook pages and my Facebook groups, which meant all I had to do was reach out to my admin and say, hey, can you, I'm I'm creating a new profile. Can you add my new profile, Sammy One Drop Blindell, to um, all of the pages and groups so that I've got access again. So it was very easy. The business continuity was all there. It was very straightforward. And all I had to do was those two things was like send an email out to my whole list, letting them know my account's been hacked. Here's my new profile if you want to connect. So that was very, very easy to navigate. But what are the, what about the things that aren't so easy to navigate? And the reason I'm talking about this is because I was invited to be a part of a phenomenal book called Resilient Women, which is aimed at uh, women mums in business who maybe hit a wall or just need that little bit of inspiration and hope and faith that I just need to keep going. And so last week I contributed my chapter to that. So I had to sit down and, and really think about out of all the stories, out of all the things I've been through, what is the story I'm going to tell in this Resilient Women book. 
And and so I looked back over like the last three years and realized just how much trauma I've been through in the last three years. And it has been so traumatic. Now, I, I heard a statement or a saying, a quote many years ago that said, stop looking in the rearview mirror. You're not going that way. And what that did was it made me start only focusing on all the positive things and only focusing on the future, which is great in one sense, but also not really healthy if you're constantly looking forward and constantly looking at all the things that need to be done and you're getting them done, but then you're never looking back. You're not using your own history and you as your own mentor to be able to guide you on, okay, well, that's how things happened last time. Doesn't mean that they have to happen that way again. Your past doesn't equal your future, as Tony Robbins said, but it's very healthy to go back and look at some of those things and say, well, actually, I learned a lesson there. I, I need to bring that lesson forward. I need to bring the wisdom from that moment or that experience or whatever happened in business. I need to bring that forward. So as I'm writing this chapter for this book, I realized the amount that I've been through in the last three years. And I, I, I mean, now it just dumbfounds me what we've actually come through, what we moved through. Uh, how I just got up every day and was just relentless in, you know what, whatever's happening, if my clients don't have a business, I don't have a business. So I threw myself into my clients. I threw myself into everything I needed to do for them. But I didn't really take stock of all the things that I was doing and I was pouring out, which left me very little energy. And so I started to burn out again. And if you know me already, I've already gone through a whole burnout journey and walked away from my multi-million pound design agency in 2013 because of burnout. So I'm very conscious of that. And I could feel that I was just getting slower and slower and it was taking me longer to think and longer to make decisions. And But I didn't put it down to this. It's only since sitting down and writing that chapter last week that it made me really take stock and realize, shit, Sammy, you've been through an entire shitstorm and you've not once sat down and, and really thought about it. So there I am a few days ago, my publisher or the publisher of this book, he's also the same, my publisher as well. He writes to me and says, here's the, the final proof for you to sign off. So I, I open up the final proof and as I'm looking at the chapter, I'm thinking to myself, okay, there's two ways I can look at this. I can either read this chapter as the person that's written it and be really um, probably very critical and want to change things. Or I can look at this as the woman who is stuck, that is in fear, that is really struggling and, and doesn't have the motivation to continue and just needs that inspiration. I'm, I'm going to read it as that woman I decided. So I read this chapter as the woman that I've created it for, the woman that I wrote it for. And as I um, read this chapter, I'm thinking, well, like she's been through so much. Like how, how do you go through losing 90% of your turnover overnight? How do you go through just the, all of the emotions? I'm not going to go into the story because you'll have to read the book to, to read it. But all of the things that I went through and then all of the things I had to go through when I changed things and had to change things. And so I'm I'm walking the dogs a few days ago in the park. We we live on a boat and there's a beautiful um, enclosed marina, marina park here. So I'm walking the dogs, and I'm thinking about this woman and God, like what she'd been through and how does she come through that and how she's been so resilient and how she managed like even with her website going down and her Facebook account being hacked and all of the things that's happened to her over this just this last three years. And starting again in so many ways, even being so experienced and having built nine businesses already, just there's so many times that you feel like you're having to start again and so many things that you're having to come through. And, and as I'm thinking about this woman, I'm just in awe of this woman and how she's come through it. And, and I start getting imposter syndrome. Right? I start like, you know, I don't, I don't feel like I'm good enough for that. Like, I like, how, what would I do if I went through that? And I had to shift myself and go, that was you, for God's sake. That was you that's come through that. And it was a really powerful moment. I said to my husband later that day, I said, God, I felt so stupid as I was walking the dogs today. I realized I had imposter syndrome about myself. 
comparing myself now to the person that I was three years ago that that has gone through so much to be who I am now. And, and it was a really powerful moment for me. So I want you today to just think about how far you've come and how resilient you've already been and pull that into your brand because as you brand and expand your business, who you are being is critical. How you are showing up is essential and how you measure all the things you've been through, no matter what you face as you're building your brand, all the things you've come through so far, I'm sure there's some pretty shitty hard stuff that you've moved through that in comparison to what you're going through now, that was probably tougher. And if you think about the worst moment of your life and compare that to the moment that you're going into drama over or getting fearful about, when you go into that, then you'll realize just how far you've come and that actually you are totally resilient. You are easily resilient enough to build your brand and to go out there, be that thought leader in your industry, be that change maker in your industry and create that ripple of change, that ripple of impact that you were born to make. So uh, that's all I've got for you for today's show. I really hope that in some way, something that I've said has touched you and that you will go out there Be that ripple you want to see in the world and be resilient as you do it because you were born to create the change that you're making and you need to turn the dial down, the volume down on any little shit that's working its way into your head. Turn the volume down on that and turn the volume up on your reason why. Turn the volume up on the impact that you're here to make. Turn the volume up on your vision and keep moving towards it. Keep reminding yourself of why you're doing what you're doing because there is a bigger reason why you said yes to building your business in the first place. I would love to know what that reason is, by the way. I'd love you to put it in the comments below. And my question for you today is, if you had an impossible goal, like if you thought about a a massive, massive goal and you thought that there's no way that's possible, that can't be, I can't achieve that, what would that goal be? I want you to put that in the comments below. Have an amazing day. Keep making those ripples that only you can make and I'll see you in the next show.